This is the first video for section 6.3 covering permutations. Let's start with an example. Let's say I want to find the number of words and I use words in quotation marks because most of the words won't make sense. I want the word to contain three letters, A, B, and C, and the word must contain all three letters and each letter can be used only once. So obviously I chose just three letters to make it easier but I could have A, B, C, or I could have A, C, B, or I could have B, A, C, or I could have B, C, A, or I could have C, A, B, or I could have C, B, A. So brute force tells us there are six ways to do it. And it's perfectly fine to do it that way, but the question is only asking for how many and not what are the words. So if it's not asking for what are the words, this, is time consuming and kind of silly. So let's think instead about the multiplication rule. We know that the word is going to have three letters. How many choices do I have for the first letter? Well, I have A, B, and C, so I have three choices for the first letter. Multiplication rule says if we have more than one event occurring, we're going to multiply the number of outcomes for each event. So now that I've chosen my first letter for the first position, I now have two letters remaining, whichever one I did not use in the first position. So for my second letter, I have two choices. Similarly, I have just one letter left, which means I now have one choice for the third letter, because once the first and second letter have been chosen, there's only one left for the third. Multiplication rule says take three times two times one, which is six. Now let's make this a little bit more abstract. So now I want to find the number of words that contain N letters. And again, it has to contain all N letters each only once. So we're gonna think about that same strategy that we just used when we had A, B, and C. Obviously we're not gonna use a brute force method, but we're going to use this same idea that says the first position, I have N ways to do this. Then I have N minus one letters left for the second position. And then I have N minus one minus one or N minus two because we're just decreasing this guy by one because I've now used two letters. Now I've used three letters, so there are N minus three ways and so on and so forth. So all the way down until we get to two letters left and one letter left. So essentially we're saying take N times every integer less than N all the way down to one. Well, that is called N factorial. And factorial is great, again, if you're using all N of the letters. So that's very specific here that we have N letters and we have to use all N letters. So we'll change things up in a little bit, but for now let's take a look at the formal definition of factorial. For an integer, n is greater than or equal to zero. n factorial, denoted obviously n with the exclamation point, is defined as zero factorial is equal to one, and we're going to talk more in depth about that in a little bit, but this is a very important um, concept for us to understand because otherwise the math won't work out. And n factorial is n times n minus one times n minus two all the way down to three, two, one. So just exactly what we had up here. And again, for n is greater than or equal to one. So if n is zero, we know the solution is one. Otherwise we're multiplying by n all the way down to one. All right, now let's switch things up a little bit. Now I have a pool of 10 candidates and I want them to be chosen for three different positions, president, vice president, and secretary. So how many such linear arrangements are possible? Again, the important thing that we haven't really talked about yet is the fact that this is the order is going to make a difference. So if this is the president and this is the vice president and this is the secretary, it matters who I put as president. It's going to be different, like when we had A, B, C, and ACB, those would be two different linear arrangements. 
So again, we haven't quite talked about permutations yet, but the development is important. So again, how many people could be president? Well, there are 10 candidates. Once we've chosen a president, there are nine candidates left to be vice president. And once we've chosen both of those, we have eight candidates left to be secretary. Now, I want you to notice that this value is not equal to 10 factorial. So it's not equal to n factorial, where n is 10. We're going to call this other number k. Uh, you might see it as k, you might see it as r. They really mean the same thing. Now, what I want to think about is if n is 10 and k is 3, how could I find this solution using factorials? So let's think about if I had 10 factorial as my numerator. And for my denominator, I have, if I only want the 10, 9, and 8, it would make sense I would have to then divide by 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Sorry for the bad handwriting. Because that would mean everything cancels out, leaving us only 10, 9, and 8. So before we move on, I want to point out two things which are going to come in handy when we actually define permutation in just a moment. So this was 10 factorial over 7 factorial. How could I come up with that using the 10 and the 3? Well, obviously, the top is 10 factorial, which is n. The bottom was 7 factorial, and 7 can be found by taking 10 minus 3. Let's do that. 10 minus 3, which is what got me the 7 factorial. So really, what did I do? I took n minus k factorial. So you're going to see this again in just a moment. The other thing I want to point out is the three values that we did use were n, n minus 1, and n minus 2, obviously. But it, that could also be written as n minus k plus 1. So what's n minus k plus 1? This is 10 minus 3 plus 1, which is 13, I'm sorry, 7 plus 1, which is 8. Notice that was the last value that we had. So this would be 10, 9, and 8. All right, now that we've done a little bit of development of the process, Again, let's look at this in a more abstract sense. We have blocks numbered 1 through n. We pull out k of them. Again, we would say, OK, that's n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. But we don't know how many k is. So that's where this is going to come into play. If we can have this go to n minus k plus 1, and then this would be n minus k and then n minus k minus 1, and so on, all the way down to 1. If, as our denominator, we have n minus k, n minus k minus 1, all the way down to 1, just as we talked about before, everything's going to cancel, leaving us just this value. So our last value is n minus k plus 1. Before we move on, let's go ahead and take a look at the formal definition. A permutation. A permutation is a linear arrangement of objects where order or position matters. So if there are n distinct objects, remember n tells us how many objects we have, the number of permutations of size k, and it makes sense that k would have to be between 1 and n because we can't permutate more than n objects, for the n objects is, and this is our notation, p, and then n comma k, tells us that we're going to take n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to n minus k plus 1. And we've already talked about the fact that that can also be written as n times n minus 1 all the way down. And if we continue this, we can see that n minus k 
n minus k minus 1 all the way down would cancel if we in fact use n factorial over n minus k factorial. So when we have a permutation of n objects and we're choosing k of them, this is the function that we are going to use. Now let's take a look at an example. How many ways can the letters A, B, C, D, and E be arranged in groups of three? So based on what we were just discussing, before we talked about permutations, we would say, okay, there's five letters for the first, there's four letters left for the second, and there's three for the third. So that would be 60 ways. So that is a correct answer. But again, we want to find something that's a lot easier to use a calculator with. And a calculator has a fancy factorial button. So let's take a look now at permutation. This is five objects, and we're choosing three of them to be permutated. That tells me, remember, that P of n k is n factorial over n minus k factorial. So this tells me 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial. So 5 factorial over 2 factorial. 5 factorial, I can use my calculator very quickly to find 120. 2 factorial, 2 times 1 is 2, and guess what? We still get 60. So really what we did is we took 5 factorial and divided it by 2. Well, why do we divide by 2? Again, because the arrangement A, B, C, D, E and A, B, C, E, D are the same arrangement because we're only caring about the 3 and therefore we have to divide by 2 because we are dividing by the number of duplicates. So let's revisit the fact that 0 factorial is equal to 1. A couple of ways to think about it, um, but let's first look at the permutation of n objects that are all being arranged. So we have n objects or so arranging all n of them, and that's kind of where we started. And we knew that from our development, we knew that our solution is going to be n factorial. But let's look at the math. If we were going to say p n n, that would mean n factorial over n minus n factorial. Well, we know we can't divide by zero, so this is n factorial over 0 factorial. 0 factorial has to be 1 in order for the math to work. The other way to think about this, which might even make more sense, is that how many ways are there to arrange 0 objects? Well, there's just one way that we don't have any objects to arrange, and therefore we're not arranging them. So there's just one way. We're going to end with just two more examples, and I wanted to do two examples that weren't quite as straightforward as the others um, because it's a pretty simple concept. We spent a long time um, developing the knowledge, but in general, the application of permutations is fairly straightforward. So let's look at a couple where maybe it's not. First, suppose we have a saleswoman who must visit five cities. So yes, we have five cities. She must go to Chicago first, but she can visit the other four in any order that she chooses. How many possible ways can she schedule her trip? So again, you might be fooled into thinking this is five choose five, or perhaps five choose four. But really, if we go back to how we started this, we know that this first guy is Chicago. Now I have four other cities that I can go to in any order that I want. So the actual solution here is the permutation of four choose four, which of course would be all of the cities, which is really just four factorial. I can write that as four factorial over four minus four factorial. Or again, we've already talked about the fact that zero factorial is equal to one. So four factorial is 24 ways. The other question has permutations of the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters. N is eight. But the question is, how many contain the string A, B, C in that order? So really what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, ABC is going to be one letter. 
That whole thing is one letter. So N is not going to be eight. N is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So I actually have six letters. One of the letters is ABC. And what's going to happen is we're going to permutate those six letters. And we know that because this is one of the letters that they're all going to have ABC in them in that order. So all I have to do is say permutation of six, choose six, because I'm going to do all of them, which again is really just six factorial or 720 permutations. So we are finished talking about permutations for now. However, we will revisit in section 6.5, we will revisit permutations and talk about what happens when things get a little bit more complicated. So we ended with some that were maybe more complicated, but they weren't complicated in terms of permutations. So we're going to take a look at permutations where say you can use a letter more than once, you can repeat those values. For now, though, we're going to move on to combinations. So combinations are similar to permutations, except that in a permutation order makes a difference. And in combinations, we're really just talking about groups.